Hey folks, I want to give you a really quick tip on a cool technique that I use a lot uh, to name your tests more effectively. See, naming tests is actually a really hard but really important part of test automation because if you name your tests wrong, after a while it becomes very hard to maintain and your tests lose a lot of their value because it becomes harder to know what exactly they do when you come back to it later on. It can be hard to figure out if they break, why they broke, and it can be hard to use them to explain what you're testing and what your application does. But if you name them well, then your tests become a form of documentation, both for now to say what your application does at the minute, but also later on if you want to try and understand what the application does and why it might have broken in a particular place. So the tip that I want to give you is to structure your tests in two layers and to focus your test naming convention around behavior, around the expected behavior that you want, not around test case names or test case numbers or codes or bureaucratic conventions that I see a lot of in organizations. No, none of that. Write your test case names as if you are writing a piece of documentation, a user manual if you like. And the simple trick that I use is in my test, we're going to use a JUnit example here, but it can work with anything. In your test, first of all, set the context. Say what you are testing, what is the behavior you're testing. So search test, that's pretty generic. And the word test is redundant. So I'm going to rename this I'm going to call it something a little bit more meaningful. So what exactly about searching are we testing? What search is a very broad behavior. In fact, there are lots of different facets that we might want to test. So what are we testing here? We might say something like when searching by keyword, for example. So when searching by keyword, we don't just say search test. We say when we're searching by keyboard word, what happens? And that's the trick. The next thing we do is describe the behavior we want. I never use the word test in my tests. It's redundant. We don't, we know it's a test. I want to describe what behavior I'm expecting. What exactly do I expect the system to do for this particular scenario? There are a few different ways we can think of this, but in, in this example, for example, we've got we're searching by different keywords. That's fine. But what are we really, really searching? What are we really trying to test here? I like to, if I don't already have them already, I like to jot down the behavior that I want to test. So I might say something like uh, uh, search by a single keyword, search by multiple keywords and then we might do edge cases search with an empty string what happens there what happens if you search uh, but with an emoji and so forth lots of test cases you could think of like this I won't go through them all obviously but that's just a general idea now and now here's the trick if your tests, I'm assuming these tests are relatively distinct, so you're not doing data-driven testing or anything, you're just having different scenarios for each one. Name the scenarios after the behavior that you expect and make it a, make the flow from the test case name to the test name form a single sentence. So when searching by keyword, uh, we could say something like should not uh, allow, actually let's make that realistic based on the test that it actually is, uh, should be able to search by a single keyword. Now the should be able to is a little bit redundant. We could quite easily also shorten that just to, so when searching by keyboard, search by a single keyboard word, we might have search with multiple keywords. And we might change this to puppy toys or something. Uh, make sure it still works. And so forth. Then we could have other tests where we have things like uh, should not allow a search 
with an empty string and so forth. Now you notice the way I'm naming these. I'm writing it pretty much in plain English, just in uh, in camel case, but the names are all based on the behavior that I'm trying to capture. Now, if we want to make this even more explicit, if we are using a library like uh, GUnit 5 or TestNG, where you have the ability to give more meaningful annotations in GUnit 5, which we have here, we can make this uh, uh, should, uh, or we can make it a bit longer. Search by a single keyword. And then we might add a few more details about the expectation. So this one might be searched by multiple keywords should return articles with both keywords. For example, that might be our business rule. So you see what I'm doing here is I'm turning this into documentation. So when I run this, uh, when I when I execute these tests, it's going to be a lot clearer what we're actually doing when searching by keyboard, searching with by multiple keys should return more articles and so forth. So it's actually running the test. We don't really care, but it is uh, search by a single keyword and so forth. So we have a much more meaningful layout for our test. So that is the essence of the trick that I wanted to show you. There are lots of other things we can say about naming tests, but this very simple rule have the class name for your test case, describe the overall behavior that you're testing. And then in the test names, describe the rules or constraints or examples or uh, edge cases that you are testing. And just that simple step in, a, in itself will go a long way making your test cases more readable and more maintainable. Thanks for listening, folks.